People think that as it rains a lot, we don't have to worry so much about a water resource. But a water resource has to be stretched among a lot of people in the southeast of England. In fact, it's seen as a water stressed area. Now, at Bedside, there's a number of ways that we try to look at how we can manage the water used on site and also water that falls onto the site. An interesting thing about the UK wastewater system is that all water from taps to toilets to storm drainage all passes through the sewage system. The idea at Bedside was to minimise the impact on the sewage system by reducing the volume and by recycling water wherever possible. The first system that was used at Bedside was a green water treatment plant. Soiled water and grey water from toilets, baths, showers was pumped between a series of reed beds that filtered the water. The water was then clean enough to be used for toilet flushing and irrigation. There were some operational and maintenance issues associated with this system, so Thames Water, in conjunction with Peabody, looked at a new system called a membrane bioreactor, an MBR. It's a three-year research and development programme. How it works, we've got our settling tanks, and then we've got a series of micro sieve filters. So the liquid goes through that, goes through a charcoal filter, and then chlorine's added. And that water is used now for toilet flushing and for irrigation. That water is drinking water standard. We don't drink it because you need a site four times that size for safety, but it's a really good quality that's coming out of that. From the biodiversity point of view in the water management, the best example of this would be from the green roofs. It's a sedum which can retain the water which we can later use, but it's also a very diverse area. Um, a recent survey that we did showed 17 species of spider in that roof, which is seen as a, a good indicator of a, of a rich ecosystem. New technologies are looking at species that are particularly used in different types of ecosystems. So this was 10 years ago. In the last 10 years, it's grown massively and is a very big new technology. The water that we now get when it rains goes down this series of pipes and then into the, the ditch at the front of the development, into the River Wandel, into the River Thames. What we're doing is we're separating rainwater away from storm drainage and therefore sewage treatment system. Now the Thames water sewage system in London is creaking. It's over 100 years old. It can't take the volumes that we're putting through it now. So when we're getting a lot of rain, that water can't go through a sewage treatment system, so it has to be vented into the Thames. So we're getting untreated sewage in the Thames a couple of times a week, particularly in the summer. If we can separate the rain away from that system and put it straight back into watercourse, we're obviously putting rainwater back into the river and therefore we don't have to treat it. If you look under the cars, this is all permeable blocking. So it's just bricks with no cement in between. When it rains, the water goes through that system, permeates through to the water table. So once again, you're separating the water away from storm drainage. We're looking at trying to reduce water consumption inside each house and there's a number of design features that went in to try and incorporate that. So on the um, shower heads and on the water taps we've got aerators, which is a very simple technology which basically increases the surface area of the water and reduces the amount of water that we need. The baths are all slightly reduced size compared to an ordinary build, which means we use less water in those baths as well. And very simple design features has enabled us to reduce our water consumption to about half the national average.